So maybe you could tell me a little bit about the flow. We could capture some of that so that listeners can start to frame some ideas around what it might look like to be in this sound training. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, this is probably the most uh, information and knowledge uh, laden of all the uh, three trainings that I offer uh, towards certification. So it's a lot of foundational understanding of, of the nature of sound, uh, the nature of uh, music, and the nature of sacred geometry. Mm -hmm. And I didn't always put all those, those three together, but uh, as I've been teaching and been learning and in my own process, I, I really feel that they're all so so interlocked and so so integral to each other. I can't separate it out any longer. <laughs> so, so, sacred geometry is a, is a big part of, of what I uh, teach in relationship to sound and sound healing. And um, the music piece, what I've found is that I, I didn't want to get too musical with this at first, but what I've uh, what I noticed is that the students would always be coming back and saying, uh, you know, what what uh, tone should I have to go with this particular bowl? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Or they'd be playing instruments that sounded so discordant together that it wasn't even uh, a very therapeutic <laughs> <laughs> modality, you know. And some people don't hear that, but I I, I certainly hear it, you know. Uh, so it's important to, to, to know what's harmonic and what's dissonant and, and what works and what doesn't. And that's, that's part of uh, the whole musical aspect there. So, so with, with this, we'll be training our senses and heightening that, that perception in our, the way that we receive sound, the way that we receive information. Is that what you're, you're saying there? Sure, yeah. Yeah, I I feel like I'm I'm a, a much more um, feeling kind of person than uh, than mental. So in other words, it, it's it's much easier for me to play and perform and and to understand sound uh, through the experiential mm. than it is through the mind. Uh, in fact, for the most part, when I'm performing or playing. It, there's a direct link from my uh, whatever is up here, <laughs> whatever I'm connected to, uh, to my hands or whatever I'm playing. And it totally bypasses my mind. <laughs> so I'm not one to really talk about the, the process of, of how that happens. I just do it. I feel it. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's the kind of the foundation of, of my work. And so uh, over the years, I've realized that not everybody experiences sound like that. So the training is really about uh, how to put that in a, in a mental uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And so I have a, a manual that, that explains things, but uh, there's a, a good bit of talking in this, in this first leg of the journey, so to speak. So but uh, i i never do away with the, the experiential there's a lot of uh, uh, sound immersion I, I call my experiences immersions uh in which people just totally let go of the mind and, and just get into that very deep deep state one and, of the things sorry go ahead and uh, uh, uh many people will come back and I, I hear that from years later they say that this experience even though it was a training or a teaching uh it was a, a life changer that the trajectory of their their lives have changed because sound is is profound in that way you know you don't have to talk about things it just gets in there does its work shifts you and kind of so, sometimes aligns you to the the path that you should be on Mm -hmm. so and I like how you put that. Yeah, so you don't have to think about it. It just does its work, you know. Would you say that this would be an appropriate course for anyone that just has an interest but has no experience with working with sound? I, I tend to be a, a, a good bit woo. <laughs> so... <laughs> 
So if you're just interested, mildly interested, and don't have a kind of a metaphysical background or even uh, an aptitude or interest in, in meta, all things metaphysical, you're not going to feel comfortable in my in this class uh, because what what I noticed from the very beginning is when when people start really uh, feeling the influx of, of vibration and sound and its pure tone um, manifestation they start traveling mm -hmm. and when you start traveling you you expand yourself and so that's you have to be willing and ready to to go into the those those places of traveling to be a, a good student of sound healing and so i don't mince my words i, I will tell about very very uh unusual experiences that i and, and so many others have had uh through the the use of sound and pure tone Okay, hey, so as long as people are open to the more ethereal and woo, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but no no requirement of having any previous experience with playing instruments or... No, no, okay. no. In fact, uh, when I first started teaching, that was about 15 years ago, uh, Carol, my wife and I were uh, doing monthly uh, sessions in our home and We'd, we'd have anywhere from 10 to 50 people uh, coming in uh, regularly. And um, what I noticed is that, uh, that these most of these folks were, were actually healers themselves. They, whether they realized it or not, they had the aptitude, they had the, uh, the ability to focus their energy. And we did a, we did a lot of that work, and I was always the kind of the sound guy in the background. I was the piano man, <laughs> uh, so orchestrating vibrationally what was what was going on, and so uh, during that time, uh, people would come and uh, give me gifts, so like a Tibetan bowl, crystal bowl, a flute, a gong, any number of different things, and say this is this is for you. So of course I had to had to play with it. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I learned how to, to use the instruments, but I, the most important thing is that I watched people as they experienced that pure tone. Mm -hmm. And as they pick, would pick up the same instrument, I could tell that they, they had this uncanny uh, ability to project their, their own, uh, I, I should say, transformation or maybe healing energy uh, through sound. And so the waves of sound really conduct your healing intent. And so these people were, were just uh, natural healers, but they didn't have a lot of background and sound and music and, and kind of what, what I went through in my training. So I thought, you know, I, I should actually start teaching what I know just to give folks a, uh, a sense of confidence mm. so that they, they would be mm -hmm. able to do this without feeling like, I don't really know what I'm doing, so I'm, I'm not going to do it, you know. Because uh, it was just uh, kind of uh, magic and, and miracles waiting to happen. <laughs> so so this, this training really is designed to, to give you self-confidence. I, I feel like inherently anybody that's drawn to sound healing already is a healer. Uh, they, they know how to project that, that energy and... Uh, they man manifest change just just through their presence, but sound mm -hmm. is even stronger. It's it's a really a good way to really shift consciousness. So that's what this is all about. Yeah, that that brings me into a question that was starting to form. That I would love to hear what your perspective is on this, and the the way that I have been experiencing sound and find that it's so important right now is that it is is helped me to find that channel that you were talking about earlier where it's not coming from the mind it's not coming from the personality but it is coming through um you know maybe a word like transmission <laughs> is appropriate there or mm -hmm. being the hollow bone mm -hmm. and i'm finding and have found that through that it's been very clarifying for me it's been um healing for me 
but it also is it's helping to deepen the awareness of my heart and the field that projects from my heart and the way that we communicate through the heart um, and how that is it's important to be grounded in the body in order for the heart to be able to expand and to be able to communicate and to be open to offer these transmissions. So that, that has been a part of the work that has been evolving in me is being really conscious of as I'm playing, maybe it's the bowls mm -hmm. that I'm tuned into my heart so that the bowls are amplifying it's amplifying my presence as you were saying like one of the most important things is just the presence mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. that is when we look at what's my purpose my purpose is to be present and so that that brings the question to you of what's what's your perspective on why sound is so important right now and you know, one of the reasons that if somebody did have any interest in this, maybe in particularly somebody who's already in the healing arts, why it would be helpful for them and your perspective on why it's important right now. It's the fast track to raising your vibration. It's getting out of your mind, and that's what pure tone does. It helps you totally get out of your mind very, very quickly. Uh, in fact, uh, I had one particular gentleman come into one of my sound immersions and I could tell that he he really was it wasn't his idea for being there. <laughs> his his wife had drug him along. I, I think ah. he was probably in his mid sixties, he was retired. <laughs> and he's thinking, Okay, I'll I'll do this for an hour and then I'm out of here, you know. Lucky him. <laughs> <laughs> so so he laid down and uh was was out was out for an hour you know he came came back up to me af after the class and said uh explain what happened because in my whole life i've never been able to be motionless for more than two minutes at a time i have to, i have to be in, in moving uh, the movement is part of who i am you know and i can't sit still but as soon as you hit that first bowl that first tone my body was glued to the floor and I, I couldn't move <laughs> and I stayed that way for an hour. So what, what's the mechanism? What, what just happened here? And I explained it as a, the way that pure tone uh, just uh, stills the mind so that you're not all out here. Uh, and it also uh, affects the body because of that, because the mind shuts down the body has to has to follow follow suit. So there's nothing that I said that that created that. It was just the pure tone that that helped to create that. And this person uh, came back again, and the same thing happened. So it wasn't a, just kind of a fluke thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was kind of surprised that uh, that the sound would do that to him. You know? Mm, yeah, I've had I've had a few experiences um, with other people like that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just nothing that can supplement experiential healing mm -hmm. or the mystical experience. Um, and this is something as, as I've studied a little bit more about plants and plant medicine, there's a lot of this mystical experience where people um, are able to take something that was a concept that was universal, that was really large and actually have a personal relationship with it. And that's something that that's very, um, it's very personal to me and to my mission. And there have been multiple times where I've had people come to sound healings who have also experienced forms of plant medicine have sat in ceremonies and they're like, that was far beyond what I have experienced in say an ayahuasca ceremony or a cacao ceremony. And it just goes to show how powerful you know, intentional sound can be for creating a container for the consciousness to be able to, to heal, to um, shift and to 
to change, to transform and to connect with whatever it is that's needed most at that time. Um, so I just, I wanted to share that for anyone that's listening that sound is something that is, is so primordial. It's so, it's the fabric of everything and to be able to connect with it in a really conscious, intentional way. And especially with someone who has so much experience like yourself and so much love, so much passion um, for that. It, it, I can only imagine all of the magic that will be available to the people in <laughs> this training. And you know, hopefully for everyone to have that direct experience of the mystical or the mystery or um, spirit, God, source, whatever that is for them, magic, whatever that is for them, I'm, I'm really feeling the aliveness of that potential in that space. You know, I, uh, I'm reminded of the fact that you studied shamanism by, by some of the, the world's great teachers and um, I've, I've never taken up a study of, of shamanism, but the experiences in, in sound healing so, so mirror the shamanistic experience, uh, both with myself and, and with other people that have come in and, and had the experience. I'm reminded of a chiropractor that brought his whole uh, team in, his, uh, all of his office workers, Close the, close the studio down and just did uh, a session for them. And afterwards he came up and said, "Is after you hit that first tone, a jaguar came out and laid down by my side and was there the whole time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and he wasn't put off by that. In fact, he said, uh, it, it was unusual, but I know that the jaguar is my, is my power animal. So he was very open to the to that kind of experience. Not everybody might be, <laughs> but he he was a little little uh, taken by that. That uh, sound immediately opened up a portal, and and look who came through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's that's only one of many many ex experiences that people have had. Uh, and and you don't have to call it shamanism. I, I think it's just naturalism. It's just uh, just something that happens. It's in our field, and the, the veils are getting so thin now that mm -hmm. it's easy for those kind of things to happen. There was one uh, one woman that halfway through the session she had been sitting in a chair, and she decided to open her eyes, and she said the whole room was full of angels. And, um, uh, and she said that happened to her a number of times, you know, different, different uh, days during these sound healing experiences. But, um, you know, that, that's the kind of, of thing that happens when, when you just open yourself and the vibrations get very high and the facilitator, like yourself, is, uh, has an intention for this kind of shifting and that, that is open to the, the magical, the mystical experience. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You, know, you know, you play the crystal bowls and you were saying that you have, have an intention uh, for, for the people you work with, but the, the crystal bowls, especially the bowls that you use, the alchemy bowls, or the, or the infused bowls, they have a, a, a really beautiful energy. Mm. But besides energy, there's an intelligence there. And it, it actually will seep through the, the physical crystallized bowl that you're, you're playing. It goes way beyond that. And that intelligence comes in and it, it wraps its, its uh, energy around the people in the room. I've, I've heard people say they could feel this waveform, almost like a figure eight going through them, going from one, through one side and then coming through the other side. Uh, one one uh, st uh, one of my students, uh, before she even took the, tr the took the training, she developed a uh, a hearing loss because she was su subject to an explosion that happened uh, right in front of her, and 
pretty much lost her hearing. But she came to a sound healing and uh, I was playing crystal bowls and she said the, uh, the vibration became very painful uh, as I was, you know, uh, increasing uh, the, the tenor and the volume of it. And all of a sudden, pop, there was this big pop in her ears and she could, she, she could hear again. Wow. And so she re actually regained her, her hearing uh, through, the, through the crystal bowls. And to me, that's the healing intelligence. It's not something that I was, I was uh, doing consciously or as far as I know, unconsciously. But I think there is a, a, an intelligence that knows what is needed. Mm. And, and use the sound to really uh, waft its its uh, its magic and and uh, healing through. Yes! Wow, that's an incredible story. Um, yes. My husband lost his hearing over in Afghanistan, and there have been multiple times where he like as we've been doing sound healing. Um, sometimes when he he's experienced some other energy medicine that it'll he'll feel something happening he'll have a sensation um, he still is open to the possibility of it him being able to regain his hearing um, so that's very hopeful and and beautiful to hear that someone else did have that experience that's wonderful what, what uh, percentage of his hearing did he lose 100 percent he, he still can't hear? Oh, isn't that amazing? Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. That's big. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Might be something to work on this. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is. Yes. Yeah. The important thing, he's open, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. As long mm -hmm. as we are open, then that's one of the ways that magic can take hold and expand beyond our limited... Mm -hmm. uh, concept or belief about reality, about yeah. ourself. Absolutely. You know, Mark, one of the things that I have uh, been watching and studying and, and trying to learn more about as I have been tracking solar activity and Schumann resonance is in accord to um, the brain and the brain waves. And are you, will you be bringing in any information about that with the different, um, what would you call those, bandwidths, the b different bandwidths and how that relates to brain waves? I, I talk a lot about entrainment. I, I, I do talk about the Schumann resonance. And as you know, it's, it's been really off the charts as far as what it used yes, to it be. Has. It was right at 7.83 for probably thousands of years. And then in our lifetime, it's just gone off the scale. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, about sound and sound healing and so forth. And I, a part of what I feel like my job is to kind of debunk some of the, the common misperceptions. And uh, so I know a lot of people use that 7.8 frequency as, as a starting point and saying, okay, if you uh, attune yourself to the earth frequency, uh, you'll be very grounded or any number of other things. But the earth frequency is, is not there any longer. You know, it's like chasing a butterfly, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's something that has shifted so dramatically and is doing so every day that if, if we try to pinpoint a, a frequency, it's going to be, we're going to kind of shoot ourselves in the foot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and yet it's, it really is important to be calibrating to the, to the earth and, um, so I, I try to find the, the, the frequencies that, that are more stable, and that's where sacred geometry has come in and helped. And um, oh, dur during the shutdown, I spent three years intensively studying and researching and uh, creating uh, these instruments out of uh, <laughs> out of say of uh, tuned to sacred geometries.
So this, this particular one is uh, actually the tuning of the Lotus that you see in the background here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but it's, it's actually the, um, perfectly aligned with uh, the, uh, the Platonic solids, which are the elements. And so uh, we'll be talking about that and experiencing that. I'm, I'll, I'll bring all five element harps and people will be, be experiencing that. And uh, for ev even for your husband, we don't have to. <laughs> I might use him as a as a prop. I can put it right there in his chest, and he'll feel the vibration. He'll get he'll get it. Um, but uh, yeah, the the elements are very important in the in sacred geometry, and, and they're more constant. It's it's like the template, the energetic template or the matrix from which all things arise. And so we'll do a, a good bit of work with that. And, and these didgeridoos you see in the background, I've, uh, some of these I've made and some of them I've, I've actually cut to specifically target the, the frequencies that are part of the, the elements. And I'll, I'll, I'll mm -hmm. play those along with the, um, uh, with the harps and, and keyboards or what, whatever else. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, I would. <laughs> We have an affinity for didgeridoos here. I can't play it. Uh -huh, <laughs> or uh -huh. I haven't learned to play it. Let me say that. I haven't learned to play it. Uh -huh. My husband can play it pretty well. So but... he really feels it, huh? So it, when I said 100%, so he lost 100% in one of his ears. Okay. He still can hear in his oh, right ear. Honestly, okay. he hears better than anybody in our family. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So he can hear you talking and... Yes. And so forth. How, how does he uh, experience your crystal bowls? Um, you know what? He one of one of the first times he experienced it, he popped out of his body and walked around the classroom and could see everybody's field. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, he was more attuned in his body to seeing energy fields. Wow. Um, so he he can pretty easily just hop out and astral travel if he wants. Mm -hmm. um, it's, and it's very, again, it's like that hollowing when he's playing, he just hollows himself out and he goes somewhere else. Jonathan goes somewhere else, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. but he yeah. has, he has beautiful experiences being on the receiving end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Would you just give like a short synopsis, as short as I guess it can be, about your what brought you into this field and why you feel so strongly about sharing it and how it's impacted you? I feel like I've uh, come into this lifetime with very singularly focused, and it's always been music. Whenever, uh, whenever my wife, uh, Carol, asked me what I want to do when I grow up, <laughs> the answer is, is never, never any different from I just want to play music. You know? mm -hmm. And uh, so I've embraced sound as part of that music spectrum. I've really had to let go a lot of my training and a lot of uh, my, uh, my, my feeling of... Uh, Knowing, knowing all about music, <laughs> uh, to be able to embrace and, and more fully understand sound because it's 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 very it's very deep, it's very simple, and it's very profound and it's totally out of the mind, and it's totally out of the mental sphere. You know, it, it really does quiet the mind, and so uh, that that is a a piece of sound that is uh, really needed right now. Uh, sound healing really forces you inside, mm. you know, whereas music is very expansive. It, it actually opens up your aura and, and uh, let, lets you fly. But I think uh, pure tone actually kind of forces you inside. And uh, they're both very, very important. But, uh, but I think... Uh, Sound healing is is something that's really needed right now. 
because there's so many distractions, there's so much chaos in the outer world. So, and there's a, a, so much music out there too. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's very easy to get lost in music. We're, in a sense, bombarded by music uh, wherever we go. And so, I don't think that's very good for the for the brain waves. You know? The, uh, the what what sa sound does is actually put you down to the deep delta and, and theta states where uh, we, we become very still inside and very aware of our, our inner presence. So mm -hmm. uh, I've done that with, with all the sound healing instruments that, that I've embraced, which are the crystal bowls, the Tibetan bowls, the flutes, uh, Native American and Shakta Hachi, the Japanese flute, the harps, uh, the tuning forks, didgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's so many ways of getting to those places using these beautiful beautiful sounds you know and um, one of the things that I I came to understand and this is somewhat from the work of uh, Rupert Sheldrake he he put forward this concept of morphic fields and a morphic field is created when something is done uh, repeatedly and then over the years and then with passion and so a good example of that is uh, the playing of the didgeridoo so as far as we know it, it that became a tool uh, of the aboriginals of Australia 35,000 years ago and it's never changed they've always had that that relationship with that instrument uh, and used it for ceremonial purposes, which is to travel. You know, they travel to the stars, they go home, they travel into the earth, they, they see and vision uh, their food and water sources. But this is the, uh, the one of two instruments, really. Uh, the other one is a clap stick <laughs> that they beat on their didgeridoo. Uh, but this is, this is their, their, it, their prime instrument, you know. So think of using uh, an instrument, which is actually plant medicine. It's, uh, the, their didgeridoos are created out of the eucalyptus tree. You know, they, they walk around and tap, tap on the trees, and if they're hollowed out, uh, which is uh, caused by termites eating up the heartwood, uh, they'll chop it down and make, a, make an instrument out of it. Mm -hmm. But they, uh, they have used that constantly for 35,000 years for, for those, those very meditative, contemplative, visioning uh, reasons. And that builds a field up around that instrument. Uh, I don't think there's been a single person I've ever met that uh, upon hearing the didgeridoo, they forget it. <laughs> it's, it's like indelibly in their mind and in their field after that. You know, it has such a strong presence Mm -hmm. uh, because of the way it's been used, you know, so that it's there's been a field created of, around that instrument and the, and the playing of it that connects one with the earth, connects one with the stars. It's the it's the tree essence as well, which does that same thing. It's rooted to the earth and it's rooted to the the heavens and the solar uh, as well. So that's. That's uh, the best of all the, the uh, instruments of sound healing have that morphic resonance. And uh, I, I think not only of the indigenous, the aboriginals, but of the Tibetans. Mm. They, uh, they, with their Tibetan bowls or tingshaws or, uh, you know, cymbals or horns, or, they, they love sound. They're really uh, very strong in the sound healing. And they, they use it different ways than, than most modern <laughs> sound healers. Uh, but they're, they're masters of consciousness. I, I think they've attained levels of uh, conscious mastery that uh, very far surpass what most people think of as possible with uh, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. presence and energy system. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit of that because they've, they've actually moved mountains uh, <laughs> <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah <laughs> with sound so their their understanding it runs very very deep yeah. 
So yeah. that's another morphic feel to tap into when you're, you're playing these instruments. Thank you for giving that, um, that description. And it, it helped me to think about it even in ways that I haven't thought about it before with mm -hmm. it have it being its own morphic field and that being connected mm -hmm. to the instrument and through space and time. Yeah. Well, uh, you can see back here, there are probably t 10 didgeridoos. <laughs> uh, a number of them I, I made, and some of them are from Australia, and, and some of them are made of agave cactus and, and other strange oh, wow. uh, things. But, uh, but they all have a certain presence. And because I, I was so fascinated with them, I'm trying to kind of figure out what, what is it about this instrument that's so compelling, you know, and that you immediately feel and are thrust into, into a different frame of reference as soon as you start playing or you start hearing it. And uh, it's, it's actually taking, working with them, making them, playing them, recording with them over the years uh, to, to uh, glean an appreciation, a really deep appreciation, not only for the instrument, but for the plants that, that created mm. them, for the people that played them for so many years. And it's, 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 all, it's all of that rolled into one. And so it's not su such a simple thing to just play a, a sound and to transport you. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's in the making for 35,000 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I'm sure that you have had a connection with it through many lifetimes. <laughs> Well, this was truly enlightening and um, always such a pleasure <laughs> just to be connected with you and to talk a little bit more about this upcoming experience that I'm looking so forward to. And yeah, I'm just very, very grateful that you're here on the earth right now and that you and Carol are both partnered and offering such extraordinary gifts to to the cosmos really but to our world and the time that it's deeply needed for that authenticity thank so thank you. you thank you and I'm, I'm really looking forward to coming down to birmingham this you know the deep south is uh i don't know if you consider that deep south but i i grew up oh, in yeah. the deep south yeah it's deep south it's deep south okay <laughs> So yeah, I grew up in Mississippi, right over the border, right on the. Gulf That's Coast. probably deeper. <laughs> it's pretty deep. Yeah, it's pretty deep. <laughs> but I haven't been back there, and I, I I can't even count the years. But uh, I think we're going to take a trip down to the coast because Carol's been more interested in, in seeing where I grew up. I don't know what what it's going to inform her of, but. <laughs> I told her it's just a bunch of mosquito infested swamps <laughs> down there. Alligators that'll bite your leg off. You better be careful. <laughs> Bigfoot might snatch you away. Well, who knows? Mm -hmm. It could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I did mention snakes too, but I, I think she knew I was pulling her leg. <laughs>